You may have seen recently the astrophotography, the time-lapse astrophotography that we've been able to do with the iPhone. And a few of you guys asked, how do we do it with an Android? And today, I'm gonna to show you. This is going to be broken into a few different parts. One is taking the photo. Well, it's not actually one photo. We're gonna take about 700 or so photos all through the night. And that's one stage. The second stage is bringing them all onto your computer. And the third stage is bringing them all, maybe we'll edit them first and then we'll put it into a time-lapse. This is, the result of this is potentially going to be better than what the iPhone can do with the Lumilapse and Star, Star Stacker app, but you're going to get better results with an Android with the more time that you put into it. With the iPhone, it's dead set simple to do. It's all on the phone and it's all in apps and you get a good result at the end of the day. With the Android, there are apps that are around that'll do this, but they'll do it quite badly. But if you bring them onto your computer, edit the photos, apply the same edit to all of those photos to save you a little bit of time, then bring them into a video editing app, you're going to get pretty good results. So I've used the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra to get these photos. I've done lots of tutorials about how to shoot Astro. This is not what this video is about. If you want to know how to get a single photo, I'll put a link up the top there to one of those, those videos. But essentially, I'm gonna shoot for 30 seconds with a time lapse. I don't care if there's little star trails. You can get particular about this and go for like 20 seconds and shoot it that way. But I'm gonna shoot 30 seconds. I'm gonna shoot ISO 1600. I'm gonna focus it manually on the stars. I think it works out to 0.08 or something like that, or 0.8, I should say. Take a few test shots. Once you're happy with those test shots, you're gonna open the app intervalometer. I'll link it down the bottom. Intervalometer is basically an intervalometer for your camera. You're gonna set it up to infinity amount of photos, maybe put a delay on there if you really want to, and set the interval from between 32 and 34 seconds. That will give the camera the 30 seconds that it needs to take the photo, and give it a few seconds just to think about and process that photo before you tell it to take another one. Then you hit the, put that target onto the shutter, that's it, hit start, that camera will then take a photo, and take another one, until you stop it. And in this case here, we end up with 740 odd photos, we get those from the phone, put them onto the computer, put them into Adobe Lightroom, and we edit the first photo. In this edit, we're going to do some very broad things. It's important at this point, this is where you start going, the more time I spend on this, the better it will be. So you can go through and edit every single one of those photos, and you can spend all day doing it. But what I tend to do is edit the first photo, and we'll, we'll do things like, Increase the temperature. I've used all JPEG photos for this, by the way. That's another way that you can make them better by shooting raw and then go through and edit all of them manually. And it can take you all day to do this. But by doing it the way I do it, it's just a little bit quicker. So I shoot in JPEGs, bring it onto the computer, into Lightroom, I adjust the temperature a little bit. It's not as good as doing it with raw, just to make it a little bit warmer. Then I go through and add some contrast, use some dehazing slider, use some noise uh, reduction, then hold that first photo, select the rest, and synchronize those edits to the 740 odd other photos. Once we've done that, then we export them and put them into a video editor. Once you put them into your video editor of choice, and they're all going to work roughly the same way. On this particular case, I'm using Final Cut Pro, and what we're trying to do here is use one photo that you've taken per frame. So if you're replaying this at 30 frames a second, you can soon work out that your night long amount of photos is going to end up with a pretty small time lapse. In this case here, we bring them all in, we select them all. If you're using Final Cut Pro on uh, a Mac, you basically select all the photos, hit Control D, change it to one, that'll change the whole thing to one frame per photo, and you're done. And this is what it looks like. Now, as I said, there is a myriad of ways to do this and do it better than what I've just shown you here. This is a very basic way of doing it. You can shoot raw, it'll take longer. You, I would leave it a little bit longer, maybe 35 to 36 seconds between each shutter press because raw is gonna take a little bit longer to process. It's gonna take longer to edit them. You can edit them individually. 
make just make sure that the exposure remains the same. Just keep an eye on the histogram or whatever app you're using to edit these photos. Once it goes into the program to make it into a time lapse, into a video, again, it's going to vary depending on the software that you use. One frame per photo, or one photo per frame. That's it. What do you think? Catch you later.